connected those are online are you able to hear me yes sir yes sir Yes. So we'll get started. So any questions from yesterday's class? Did you all revise everything? Can I ask questions? Yes. Okay. So Chitesh, we'll start with you. Neither a confident at you. Okay, we'll start with you. So can you tell me what is the difference between calculating slope and area for a graph? There was sir. But what did you say? I don't know. Yes. So that is basically, yeah, you do this. I'll, I'll slightly go in depth today of how to use it. Okay. That is one thing. Sai Shankar, can we? Okay. Can you tell me what are the three types of classifications we did for motion on basis of what three categories we classified motion? What was the first classification based on? Apakada. Based on direction. Based on direction, I classified into three types. What are they? One dimension, two dimension, and three dimension. So one dimension is a line, two dimension is going to be a plane, and three dimension is going to be space. Right. So what is the second type of classification related? Based on how the distance in yeah, based on how the change in position is taking place. So based on change in position, can you uh, Akhil, can you tell me? Uniform and Okay, uniform, you can also call it as regular for us, for our understanding. So what happens there? In uniform motion, what happens? There is a equal distances are covered in equal intervals of time. By doing so, what is achieved? Speed and velocity are constant. At the same time, acceleration is a zero, right? What about non-uniform motion? So unequal distances are covered in equal intervals of time. Right. Then what happens? Speed and velocity are not constant due to which there is acceleration present. Acceleration is present. It's a non-zero value. Right. What is the third type of classification that we saw? So we saw based on acceleration. Based on acceleration, again, there are two types of classifications. What are they? Uniformly accelerated motion and non-uniformly accelerated motion. So uniformly accelerated motion, what happens? Obviously, acceleration is going to be a constant. The rate of change of acceleration is going to be a. I'll confuse you like this one later. Pay attention. That is right. So when acceleration is constant, the rate of change of acceleration is going to be a zero. Okay. So what about uh, the other case? Non-uniform acceleration. Acceleration is not a constant. So rate of change of acceleration is also not going to be a zero. It is going to exist. Okay, it's going to be a non-zero number. Then we started with the concept of graphs, right? So when we saw the graph, I told you an important point. Whenever you draw a graph, right? What is the analysis that you need to do? Y-axis always con is confined to dependent variable, and x-axis is confined to independent variable. In physics, what is the independent variable? Time. So mostly, what we will do is whenever we say distance time graph, velocity time graph, acceleration time graph, it is understood that time is always taken on the 
x axis all other variable parameters are taken on the y axis that's the logic right so first graph that we saw is the distance time graph so based on distance time graph itself we saw it for rest so when we speak about it being at rest when an object is at rest how is the distance time graph going to be so what are the keyword they will use in the exam for m if at all it's an mcq question what will they say what should be the right option that needs to be selected it should either be along x axis it should either be along x axis or parallel to x axis. right so what about the same thing for a displacement time graph it can be parallel to x axis along the negative y direction also am i right so one more thing if you observe right for all the graphs that i drew i always started from the origin because we generally don't consider negative time but there are situations where you can consider negative time also negative time in graphical representation means that something before you started the stopwatch so let's say you did some observation then you started the stopwatch when you start the stopwatch it is going to be zero right before that you did some observation which you want to record that will be generally taken on the left hand side but mostly if that is not mentioned the time is always considered to be from zero is that point clear yes next is what about the distance time graph for a uniform motion not uniformly accelerated motion it's for a uniform motion what is going to happen so you talk about this it's going to be a straight line which is going to be inclined with respect to the x axis right so if it has to be uniform motion what should happen the distance right the distance and the time taken should be in proportion am i right so that's what we did no i think that is what we did so if you observe the distance and the time are in proportion so one second 5 meters or 5 units whatever it is 2 seconds 10 3 seconds 15 it's a multiplication factor right then i spoke about non uniform motion so when i say about non uniform motion the object can either have acceleration to be zero correct correct acceleration can either be zero or acceleration is not equal to zero okay if acceleration is zero then it becomes uniform motion is there a possibility of acceleration being zero so i'm sorry this is wrong no sir so acceleration is not equal to zero but when acceleration is not equal to zero again you can say acceleration is constant or acceleration is going to be a variable depending on that again we can break the graph into two different parts okay so what i will do is observe so if i draw the displacement time graph for non uniform motion so when i say non uniform motion acceleration is not equal to zero if that's the case then there is a possibility where acceleration is a constant or acceleration is variable right so when acceleration is constant and you want to draw the displacement time graph where displacement is going to be s and time is going to be t then the graph will take this kind of a shape how does this come i'll tell you later after you see the derivation you will understand why the graph is taken like this this kind of a shape is called as parabola which you have already learned in your 10th grade where did you learn parabola in your 10th grade quadratic equations or polynomials also right so which polynomial or a quadratic sorry which polynomial will represent the, will take the shape of a parabola quadratic polynomial so the degree is supposed to be so have that in your mind that point i'll relate it here it's a parabola to be more specific it can be called as an upward parabola because it's in the upward direction it's actually half of the parabola you are able to understand it is symmetrical in the other direction as well that part is not existing because i told you no know, time generally we don't take it as negative 
That's why the graph is in this way. Those who are online, I hope you're able to understand this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, can someone speak? I'm not able to hear. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Whereas when you talk about the acceleration being a variable and you are interested to draw the displacement time graph, it is not possible for me to draw the graph directly unless I have a mathematical equation. What I need is a mathematical equation because this will change according to the way A is changing. So I cannot draw the graph. But am I clear with this? Did you understand when you draw the displacement time graph for a uniformly accelerated motion, it is going to be an upward parabola. And I repeat, these questions are important for either MCQs or assertion reason based questions. That is where these confusions will start. Sir, is this where, where A is constant? Which one? First, the first graph. First is, yeah, A is constant or you no. call it as uniformly accelerated motion. Okay. Yes. So A is constant, or you can also call it as uniformly accelerated motion. Am I clear? Right. Can I proceed? So obviously, since we saw the variation of displacement with respect to time, next that we are going to see is velocity time graph. So I'll call it as VT graph. Okay. So where the velocity is taken here, time is taken here. Okay. So obviously you can either talk about rest or motion. So first we'll start with rest. So if I have to draw the velocity time graph for rest, then how is the graph going to be? At rest means, what is the mathematical value of V? Zero. So where should the graph be confined to? It should only be on the x-axis, unlike the displacement time graph. Why? So this is the meaning for Velocity being zero. Velocity is y-axis. Y-axis is zero means x-axis. You all know this, right? Mathematically, if someone says y is equal to zero, this is the mathematical equation for x-axis. So here, who's on the y-axis? Velocity. So velocity is equal to zero. It should only be x-axis. Don't make this mistake of drawing a line parallel to x-axis because that has a completely different meaning which we'll see now. Am I clear with this? So the next part, I'm going to talk about motion. So when I talk about this motion part, I'm going to talk about Uniform and non-uniform. So under non-uniform, I will talk about acceleration is constant and acceleration is a variable. Okay. So th these are the order. This is the order in which we are supposed to draw the graphs. So first, let me talk about the velocity time graph for an object in motion, which is uniform. So when it has uniform motion, what can you conclude about velocity? Velocity is constant. So velocity is going to be a constant. When it is a constant, then what will happen is you will have the graph parallel to x-axis. So this is the reason I told you that don't draw the graph parallel to x-axis, unlike what we did in the case of displacement time graph. So here it means that the velocity is constant.
So this is for motion of an object which is uniform. So this is for uniform motion. Okay. Now, can I proceed? Next question is for non-uniform motion, comma, acceleration is uniform, means acceleration is constant. Non-uniform motion or acceleration is uniform. So when I draw the velocity time graph for this, so when I say non-uniform motion, there is a possibility where velocity is changing, right? So when velocity is changing and acceleration is uniform, then how will the graph look like? So the graph will either look like this, provided the object has started from rest, or the graph will look like this if the object has started with some initial velocity. So here it is u, here it is zero. Okay. This or this, it can either be one or two. What does one represent? One represent the object starts from rest. Two represent the object starts with non-zero initial velocity. Mother is teaching him. She is also watching. Okay, starts with non-zero initial velocity. Am I clear with this? So here, I would like to stress on one point. So when we talk about the slope, what happens here? It is change in y-axis divided by the change in x-axis, right? So here, what is the change in y-axis? It is delta v divided by what is the change in x axis? It is delta t. The meaning of it is, if I take a line like this, then this height will be delta v. Why I called it as delta v is because if I drop a perpendicular from here, and if I drop a perpendicular from here, listen, let me call this as v1 and let me call this as v2. Okay, is there a change in velocity you are able to take? See? where the corresponding times can be T1 and T2. I mean, so this is going to be delta T. So basically slope means when you take this kind of a shape, it is the Y axis divided by the X axis. So delta V by delta T is basically, can I call it as V2 minus V1 divided by T2 minus T1 according to this diagram? So to put it simple, what is delta V by delta T according to physics? It is acceleration. So meaning, whenever they give you a velocity time graph and they ask you to calculate the slope, see, very simple, okay? Slope is a mathematical term. For every mathematical term, there will be a corresponding physics term. So mathematically, slope means change in y-axis. Y-axis and x-axis are mathematical languages. Change in velocity and change in time is language of physics. Are you able to understand? So we are connecting them. When you do this, delta V by delta T, according to the definition, is supposed to be acceleration. To be more precise, what acceleration is it? It is average acceleration. 
Am I clear with this? So whenever you have a graph and you find delta V by delta T, it is going to give you average acceleration. There will be certain scenarios where you will calculate ds divided by dt, which is going to give you instantaneous acceleration. Am I clear with this? Am I clear? Okay. So is keep it, noting it down. Is it, it's not, it's not dv. Oh, again, I made the same mistake. Okay. It is dv by dt. Okay, I'll just be back. Yeah. So shall we proceed? So this is all about 
non uniform motion where the velocity is changing and the acceleration is uniform so similarly when you talk about non uniform motion where the acceleration is also changing there you need the mathematical equation for us to draw the graph okay so this is about slope the next question is when we calculate the area under this graph what are we going to get so product of velocity and you will get the product of velocity and time so velocity into time is going to give you displacement meaning whenever they give you the velocity time graph and ask you to calculate the area under the graph indirectly what are they asking you to calculate according to physics they are asking you for the displacement is the point clear so this is how it works i'll tell you how that displacement is actually coming let me write the mathematical equation see i told you dv divided by dt is going to be acceleration right and we know that ds divided by dt is going to be velocity right which implies ds will be equal to v into dt right so just to give you an introduction wherever this d comes it's treated as a differential coefficient what is it called as it is called as a differential coefficient so ds is equal to v dt whenever you want to remove this ds all that you need to do is a reverse operation which is integration so when you integrate on both the sides integral of ds is equal to integral of v into dt observe v is velocity t is time so y axis into x axis product of this integrator will give you the area so the meaning of this is called as sir i can't i can't hear you sorry i can't hear you you're not able to see you're not able to hear me yes sir i can hear you. okay so listen this is area of the graph or i'll say area under the graph vt right so when you integrate it let's say from t1 to t2 that will give you the area under the graph vt so integral of derivative of something is basically integral and derivative are like counter operations of each other. so what will happen there they get cancelled so s will be equal to integral of v into dt from t1 to t2 that is the reason why when you calculate the area under a velocity time graph it always gives you displacement okay clear so this is the meaning make a note of
Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay. So what would be the last category that we are going to see? Obvious. We saw displacement time. We saw velocity time. The last category is going to be acceleration time graphs. So what would be the name that you can give to them? You call it as AT graph, right? So the first category is going to be for rest. So when you talk about the acceleration time graph for an object which is at rest, how is the graph going to be? It's very obvious. So for an object at rest, velocity is zero. Velocity is zero, acceleration is also zero. So it is going to be confined along the x direction. Because acceleration is going to be a zero. And this is going to happen when the object is at rest. So when you talk about motion, you can speak about uniform and non-uniform. So uniform and non-uniform are further subclassified into, sorry, non-uniform motion is further subclassified into, so acceleration being constant or acceleration is not a constant, it's a variable. So first we will see for motion which is uniform. So for the motion which is uniform, how will the acceleration time graph look like? So when the motion is uniform, recollected from the beginning, displacement is going to be a constant. What about velocity? That is also a constant. What about acceleration? It is zero. For uniform motion, there is no acceleration. No? For uniform motion, acceleration is zero, meaning the graph for acceleration time will be confined to x-axis in two scenarios. When is it? When the object is either at rest or when the object is having a uniform motion. Is the point clear? So this is also going to be for uniform motion. Am I clear with this? Yes? Right. So the last point is when I talk about non-uniform motion, when I say acceleration is a constant, then how is the graph supposed to look like? When I talk about the graph for the acceleration being a constant, how will the graph look like? So it'll be a straight line inclined to x-axis, but that's a mistake we make. Because graphically, what is that? where is acceleration? Acceleration is on the y-axis. When the y-axis parameter is constant, the graph is always parallel to x-axis. So this will be the graph for acceleration being constant for acceleration time. Whereas when it is going to be a variable, when acceleration is going to be a variable, then you need the mathematical equation for you to plot the graph. So what we need, we need the mathematical equation because it will vary from place to place or from equation to equation. Are you able to understand? Right. So make a note of this.
சரி சார் நான் கிளாஸ் முடிச்சுட்டு நான் காலையில் கால் connected so so with this uh, we have completed the basics that are needed for us to understand the derivations okay so the next concept that we are going to see is derivations of something called as equations of motion so this is a concept which you have already learned in your lower grades right there are three equations of motion you would have learned this so we are going to see the concept of derivations of equations of motion when the acceleration is a constant so when the acceleration is kept a constant kept as a constant then how are we going to derive this okay first when we take the velocity time graph right when we take the velocity time graph for an object which is having a uniform acceleration then how is the graph the graph can either start from origin and be a straight line or it can be starting with some initial velocity and it can be a straight line right so when i take the graph in this way where the initial velocity is a non zero value and i'll call it as u okay so what is going to be the value here like what is going to be the coordinate of this point it be u comma i'm sorry it will be zero comma so what is going to be the coordinate of this point it will be zero comma u meaning time is zero the initial velocity is u okay let me take another value here as t comma v okay i'll take it as t comma v means at some instant at some time t comma 0 the corresponding velocity is going to be 0 comma v so the intersection of these two perpendicular lines is going to give me t comma v right so i am going to see the first equation of motion so the first equation of motion here is defined with respect to finding the slope of this line so what is the slope of this line it is change in velocity divided by the change in time so basically it is v minus u when i say change in velocity it is the change in the final minus the initial so v minus u divided by t minus 0 except so this value i will call it as a because the change in velocity with respect to time is acceleration which implies v minus u divided by t is going to be a a v is equal to u plus at so basically what happens here t will go to the other side it will become at so v will be equal to u plus at which is the first equation of motion which is the first equation of motion am i right
right now the next point is i got one of the equations of motion using the concept of slope so there is a possibility i'll get another equation of motion using area right so for the second derivation what i'll do is i will take the same graph again so this is going to be t comma v this is going to be 0 comma u drop a perpendicular from here now i'm going to calculate this area right so this is going to be 0 comma 0 and this is going to be t comma 0 now tell me how much is this distance it is t then how much is this vertical distance it is u and how much is this vertical distance it is v so i'm sorry one minute i'll correct this sir can you can you go to three seconds yeah yeah one minute one minute hmm. tell me yeah yes yeah, sir Uh, that's enough, sir. Done. Okay. Then, how much is this vertical height going to be? It is going to be V. Am I right? So, if I take this to be O, A, B, and C, what shape does O, A, B, C as a figure take? Like, what shape is it taking? It's taking the shape of a trapezium. So, what is going to be the area of trapezium? What is going to be the area of the trapezium? It is going to be half into base into sum of parallel sides. So, it is going to be half into base is how much base is t into what is going to be the sum of the parallel heights u plus v so it is going to be u plus v this i will write it as half into t into u i leave it as it is but from the previous equation we know that v is equal to u plus a t so i will write u plus a t here Right. So half into t into this is how much u plus u is going to give me 2u plus this at. Multiply this t inside. You are going to get 2u into t. Okay. You have a 2 here. Remember, this 2 will get distributed to each term. So 2u is multiplied with t, and this 2 is there in the denominator. Plus t is multiplied with at. So it becomes a t square divided by this 2 is distributed to this also by 2. So, this and this will get cancelled. You will get u t plus half a t square as the mathematical equation. But according to physics, the area under a velocity time graph is going to give you displacement. That is the reason why we say s is equal to u t plus half a t square. And most importantly, what you need to remember is this equation or for that matter all the equations that we are going to derive is applicable only when the acceleration is constant if in a question the acceleration is not a constant you are not allowed to apply these equations am i clear with this right so make a note of it. It's connected. Connected. It's connected.
Can I proceed? Yes. So if you look at the third equation, again, I'm going to take the same graph. Zero comma u, t comma v, drop a perpendicular from here. This height is going to be v, this is t. This distance is also t, this point is t comma zero and this point is zero comma zero this point is o a b c now again i know that the area of trapezium o a b c is equal to half into base which is t into sum of the parallel sides which is u plus v, am I right? So that's what we wrote in the previous case also. So that is the equation we have written, half into t into u plus v, right? Now the only difference is, in the previous derivation, when we wrote a substitution for v, I wrote v in terms of u plus at. Now I'm going to substitute t in terms of u and a, u, v and a. Okay, so how is that possible? We know that V is equal to U plus AT, then what is T equal to? V minus U, the whole divided by A. So let me take this as the first equation, this as the second equation. Using second in first, what do we get? Half into V minus U divided by A, the whole multiplied with U plus V or V plus U. Both are same. So a minus b into a plus b. So you are going to get a square minus b square, the whole divided by 2 into a. So what is this equation equal to? It is the area under the velocity time graph. So this is obviously equal to displacement. So when you rearrange the equation, you get v square minus u square is equal to 2as. This is the third equation of motion for a uniformly accelerated object. Clear? Make a note of this. Can I proceed? Yes. So these are the three equations of motion which are derived using a method called as graphical method. Because in all the three, we used only this graph and solved it, right? Now, the same derivations can be extracted using another method called as calculus method. That's what we are going to see next. So we are going to see the derivations using calculus. We are going to use the derivation, sorry, we are going to use the calculus to derive the equations of motion. Again, for which scenario? For uniformly accelerated 
motion. So what should happen is whether you use graphical method or calculus method, the answer is supposed to be the same. Okay. So before I proceed, I would like to confirm one thing. I asked you to go through the integration formula and come. Did you all go through it? So you know what is the formula? Right. Just to recollect, can you tell me what is going? What is the formula I asked you to go through? X power n dx. So how much is it? It is x to the power n minus one divided by n minus t n plus one. It is n plus one, right? Plus plus. X power n plus one divided by n plus one plus. You will have a c here, right? See, for example, if the question is like this, integral of x square dx from zero to five. So we don't need c. So you have to first write it as x cube. Only three, madam. Three other. Sorry, the formula. Yeah, but okay. It is derived x square one the you write it as x cube divided by three between zero to five substituted here. So this is called as lower limit. This is called as upper limit. Did you understand what I did here? See those who don't know, this is the only formula that I want you to know. I would I am repeating it. Listen, this is the variable x. That variable raised to the power some number. That n is some number. It can be one, two, three, anything, but it will be a constant. Okay, the variable raised to the power some number times d of the same variable. So here it is x power n dx. If that is the case, then the answer will be x power n plus one by n plus one plus you add something called as a constant. There is a reason for it. As of now, we don't need to know it. Okay, when you do this kind of an integration, it is called as indefinite integration why do we call it as indefinite is because we don't have proper boundaries whereas when you say it's a definite integration you restrict the boundaries so zero is called as the lower limit five is called as the upper limit so you have told that the variable x is there no the variable x in this case is you are you are integrating with respect to the same variable x when you do this you apply this formula what is it x power n plus 1 so x power n is 2 so x power 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 that is by x cube by 3 so when it comes to had it been indefinite integration i would have written the answer as x cube by 3 plus some c but since it is definite integration since i know the limits i'll put square bracket like this shift the lower limit to the right extreme bottom upper limit to the right top okay when you do this all that you need to know do is wherever you have that variable substitute the upper limit first don't disturb the constant that 5 belongs to the variable so it should be 5 power 3 and subtract it so upper limit minus lower limit so what is the lower limit 0 so you need to substitute 0 cube and Bottom, leave it as it is. So basically, the answer here is one twenty-five divided by three. So whenever you do indefinite integration, you will get a function. Okay. So those who know what is a function, the function is something that has the variable still existing. Whereas when you do definite integration, you will not get a function. You will get a number. You will always get a number, number or some. Value which is a constant, okay. That number has a significance. It basically represents area made by. Listen to this carefully. Area made by this x square. Area made by x square with respect to x axis. Area made by x square with x axis. I'll tell you what it means. Don't worry. Okay, I'll show you the significance. So this point alone concentrate. Okay, so I'll give you time to write. Is this clear? Is this point clear? Okay, listen to me first. So if I say integral of x dx, okay, I'm saying between zero to one. What will the answer be? Chitesh, can you try? Use that formula. X power, e to the power is one, right? N is one. So one plus one, you will get x square by same number. Two put the square bracket. 
So between zero to one. Actually, how you read is integral of x dx between zero to one. Okay. So what are we supposed to do next? Akhil, can you tell me? Yeah. What are we supposed to do? Substitute the upper limit first. So where will you substitute the upper limit? In the place of x. So it will be one square by two minus zero square by two answer is some number this half no i took this so that you will understand it listen to this carefully what did i say the significance of this half is it is area made by in this x with respect to with respect to x axis okay meaning of it is see um the basic graph for y is equal to x is going to be a straight line like this. It will exactly make 45 degrees with the x-axis. If not, you will learn it in your function also. So actually, it will be a graph like this. This is y is equal to x. Okay, listen. This is the lower limit. So the lower limit and upper limit correspond to x-coordinate. This 0 and 1 correspond to the x coordinate. Okay. So if I take 1, comma, sorry, if I take 1, comma 0 here, okay, if I drop a perpendicular from here, listen, wait. What is happening? One minute now. Who shouted, no? So if I take this as 1 comma 0, right? See, if this is 1 comma 0, what will this coordinate be? This will be 1 comma. You will take this 1 and substitute it in the place of x. So how much will you get? You will get 1. So how much is this height? This height is 1. This distance is? one. So if I ask you to calculate this area, what shape is it taking? It's taking the shape of a right angle triangle. So half into base is one into height is one. You get the answer as half, this half and this half are same. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? So that is the meaning of definite integration. So to connect the dots, what I mean here is in the previous case, I took this x square, right? So y is equal to x square is basically an upward parabola like this. You learn all these things, don't worry in your math, but as of now, accept it. So this is going to be the graph. This is 0, 0. What were the limits I took? 0 to 5. So if I take 5, 0 here, I'll drop a line like this. Then I am getting an area which this curve is making with x axis. The area of that curve will exactly be 125 by 3 square units. We don't know whether it is centimeter, meter, anything. So it's square units. Are you able to understand the significance of their integration, especially definite integrals? So that is why I told you, you know, there are two concepts one is slope, and the second is area. When I say area, this is what I mean. Area is basically you calculating the integral of that with fixed limits. Basically, you're doing definite integration. Is the point clear? So this is something I want you to register in your mind. Please make a note of it. Here it is. Uh, 
நம்ம கேமரா இல்லையா இல்ல நம்ம அதான் திருப்பி அவன் யாரு எத்தனை மணிக்கு இருக்கும் மாட்டுவோம் பட் அவனு Yes, sir. So just one more concept that you need. The same thing. Integral of, for example, if you have 2x power 5 dx. Okay. So x is the variable, 2 is a constant. So whenever a function is multiplied with a constant, the constant can be taken out of the integral. Okay. So the answer for this is 2 into integral of x power 5 dx. So it is 2 into x power 6 divided by 6. It is x power 6 divided by 3. I am not writing the plus c. I hope you could understand this. Okay. So these are the two points which we need to know before we start the derivation. So having said this, we will get started with this topic of derivations using calculus. So we are going to derive the equations of motion for an object in uniformly accelerated motion. Okay. Listen to this case. So for the first equation, what is the equation? We know that V is equal to U plus AT, right? So we will start with the definition of instantaneous acceleration. So when I start with the definition of instantaneous acceleration, I can write A is equal to dv divided by dt. Okay. So just for your knowledge, I would like to inform that this kind of an equation is called as a differential equation. So it's called as differential equation. Simple. Wherever mathematics says equation, you have an equal to symbol. But what are the variables used in it? One is acceleration. Second side, you have something with respect to dv and dt. That is why it is a differential equation. Okay. So whenever you are asked to solve a differential equation, all that you need to do is separate the variables. So here, what are the two variables you are able to see? v and t. A is a constant. Right. So dv is equal to, can I write it as a into dt? Right. So this kind of separating is called as Variables separables, meaning you are separating the variables. Okay. 
this is the only way to solve a differential equation. You need to always separate the variables. Don't worry, these two concepts you learn in your 12th grade in mathematics. But just for your knowledge, I mentioned it, that this is called as differential equation. This method of separating the variables is called as variable separables method. After this, the third step is you need to integrate. So third step is integrate with proper limits. So if you recollect, no, when we saw the graph for velocity time, we drew it like this, but what were the coordinates we took on it? This was 0, comma u. You took t, comma v. So listen to this carefully. When I say integrate with proper limits, no, I'm going to put integral symbol on both the sides and elongated s. So integral of dv is equal to integral of a into dt. So what I need to do is I need to take the corresponding limits. Observe. When t is 0, when t is 0, what is the corresponding velocity? It is u. So 0, the corresponding velocity is u. When the time value is some t, so if I take it to be t here, then what is the corresponding velocity there? It is v. Everybody understand? Okay. Now, from here, I'm going to integrate. So remember, integral of dv is going to be v only. Why? Because integral and derivative are counter operations of each other. Right? So you write this as v and you put the square bracket. So it is going to be from u to v is equal to, observe, uniformly accelerated motion, meaning acceleration is a constant. So whenever I, to, when I told you, whenever you multiply a variable with a constant, the constant can be taken out. So this will be, so a will come out and it is going to be integral of dt between 0 to t. So the answer will be a into integral of dt is obviously t between 0 to t. Am I right? So substitute the upper limit. So anything within the square bracket is still a variable. So in that variable, substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit. So what is the upper limit? V minus what is the lower limit? U is equal to A is A only. Upper limit minus lower limit. So what is it you are going to get? You will still get V minus U is equal to A T or you will write V is equal to But remember, you would have got this v is equal to u plus a t only if in the step that you could have bought, sorry, you could have brought this a outside. Had it not been a constant, had it been a variable, then a would have been inside itself, then you will not get this equation. That is the reason why it is still applicable only for this scenario. I hope you are able to connect the dots. Uh -huh. Because A is not T, it would have been T square by 2 had it been T dt, but it is not T dt, it is A dt. You don't know how is acceleration varying with respect to time. The meaning of it, I would like to stress on this point alone. One minute, guys. So he's asking, had I integrated this A dt, will I not get something like T square by 2? Is this what you're asking? Okay, but that will not happen. Because when I say acceleration is a variable, you can have an acceleration like this. Acceleration can be phi t. Acceleration could have been 60 square plus phi t plus 2. We don't know anything. We don't know anything about that equation when it's a variable. That is why when you observe, I didn't draw the graph for acceleration being variable. I told you, no, this equation is needed for us to solve. Are you able to understand? So make a note of this.
ಯಾರು ಹೇಳ So for the second equation, I will write the definition of, so we know that D is equal to Ds divided by Dt, right? So this is the differential equation. So which is ds will be equal to pdt right but we also know that p is equal to u plus kt so take the substituted when you do this you will get ds is equal to u plus at into dt right u plus at into dt where you can integrate on both the sides with proper limits. So when I integrate it with proper limits, observe here the variable is S and here the variable is T. So when I say T is equal to zero, I can say that the initial displacement was zero. Okay, I'm taking a scenario where an object has moved from A to B with a uniform acceleration. Okay. So I will take this as zero time and I will call displacement also as zero. Okay. And I will take this time as t and the displacement here as s. So at time t, what would have been the corresponding displacement? It would have been s. Okay. So which implies integral of zero to s ds is equal to integral of this u will get multiplied with dt. Integral of u dt, you have a plus, plus integral of at dt. Am I clear with this? So it is going to be integral of at dt, but write the limits as well, 0 to t, and here also you have 0 to t. So integral of derivative is again the variable itself. So s between 0 to s is equal to what will happen to this u? u is the initial velocity. At one instant, the object can have only one velocity. So the initial velocity is fixed. So it can come out of the integral. u into integral of dt between 0 to t plus here, what about the acceleration? It is a constant. So that can be taken out of the integral, but t will be inside because you are integrating itself with. So t is a variable, right? t dt between 0 to t. Okay. So here what will happen? Upper limit is s, lower limit is 0 is equal to u into what is integral of dt? It is t itself 
between 0 to t plus a into integral of t dt. It is t square by 2. It is t power n plus 1. n is 1. 1 plus 1. So, t square by 2 between 0 to t. Right. So, here s minus 0 is s is equal to u into upper limit is t. So, u t. Okay, I will write this t minus 0. Upper limit is t, lower limit is 0. Plus a into upper limit is t square by 2 minus lower limit is 0 square and you have pi 2. So, what is the answer? Which implies s is equal to u into this is t plus half into a into t square. This is going to be the second equation of which. Right? So, you can derive it using either graphical method or calculus. So, please make a note of it. T square by 2 now. Where is T into this T here? How do you want to Integration Bode, you should tell what is the variable. No, no, no. Integral of T doesn't make sense. Integral of T with respect to whom? With respect to T. So, in the DT in Radhi, it is telling you that you need to integrate time with respect to T. So, now don't multiply that. That is wrong. Shall I proceed? One last derivation. Do six, but okay. We'll take five minutes. We'll finish this. So if you look at the third derivation, for third derivation, we will say that A is equal to dV divided by dt. But we already know the equation. What is it? It is V square minus U square is equal to to AS. If you observe, it is a time independent equation. There is no time involved in it. But here, in the definition of acceleration, we have time. So, what I will do here is, I will write this as dV divided by dS into dS divided by dt. So, whenever I place a dot, it means into. Okay. So, dV by dS is nothing. Whereas, dS by dt is velocity. It is velocity. So, this can be replaced with velocity. Am I right? So, A will be equal to dV by dS into velocity. 
so v will get integrated with respect to dv and for a i will take ds to the other side so which implies v into dv v into dv is equal to a into ds tell me among this in this equation which are variables v is a variable because final velocity keeps changing with respect to distance and time whereas acceleration is a constant right so when i integrate on both the sides right hand side i need to take the i need to take the limits of displacement if i say see, it's all a simple okay initial final if i say that the initial displacement is zero for the initial displacement zero there was some initial velocity existing what was that it was u you remember the graph right initially there was a velocity u that was existing when the final displacement is s let's say the velocity is v so what is integral of v dv integral of v dv is v square by 2 between u to v is equal to see here i'll do one thing i'll take this a outside because it's a constant a into integral of ds between 0 to s now what is the integral here a is outside what is the integral of ds it is just s between 0 to s so substitute the upper limit v square by 2 minus when you substitute the lower limit you get u square by 2 is equal to a into upper limit is s lower limit is 0 so which implies v square minus u square by 2 is equal to a into s so which implies v square minus u square is 2 as so this is the third equation of which okay here so these are the three equations of motion for a uniformly accelerated object for a uniformly accelerated object using graphical method and calculus method okay. so as i told you you remember from next week on this i told you first 20 minutes will be utilized for test one 85% of the chapter is over only thing that is left out is relative velocity and relative motion which i'll explain but next class i'm not going to start with relative velocity or relative motion i'm going to concentrate on problems so i discussed how the graphs are drawn but i want you to learn how to analyze them. okay so i'll be solving problem based on graphs and these equations of motion so i want you to be strong before coming to class so there will be half an hour test not 20 minutes because the content that you have these very well tell you what i going to ask now i have not asked you the definition i'm going to ask you the graphs i'll ask you to draw all the graphs secondly i'll ask you to derive the equations of motion using graphical and calculus method 
So practice well and come so that you are able to finish in half an hour. Is it clear? So any other doubt? So that's it from my side for today. We'll see in the next class. How do you need to integrate? So these are the only two calculus options. Yeah, those are online, we can wind up.